Afria breaking news after market? Could Afria be on a full alert? Forget about Africa. Time I hear that song, it just gets me pumped up, man. Shout out to Ill Kid, he is a living legend. So it's finally happened. Afria, A P H A on the T S X, A P H A on the New York Stock Exchange. Afria Diamond Facility has finally received its cultivation license from Health Canada. The update published by Health Canada after market. After market indicates that the facility has been authorized for the purpose of cultivation of plants and seeds. <laughs> Are we going to have a Money Monday for Afria or what? The facility was constructed in concert with that of Double Diamond Farms, a Leamington, Ontario-based greenhouse operator, through a joint venture agreement. Originally announced in January of 2018, the facility has had a long and storied path to receiving its cultivation license. Originally, the facility was expected to see its first sales occur in January 2019. We are into November of 2019, and we have finally got the license Almost a full year later, the 32-acre greenhouse facility has finally received its license to cultivate. This is a catalyst. Licensing at the Afria Diamond facility was originally submitted in March 
2018 prior to rule changes conducted by Health Canada in attempt to speed up the process for those who had completed construction. As a result of the endless delays in acquiring licensing, the deep dive recently compiled a timeline of construction progress to make things clear for investors. So this is the big news. Now that it is finally licensed, the facility is expected to produce in excess of 140,000 kilograms of cannabis per year. The massive facility significantly improves AFRIA's total Canadian capacity, which now sits at 255,000 kilograms per annum with today's licensing news. So prior to this license, they had 115,000 kilograms. This number has just grown to 255,000 kilograms per year due to this breaking news. This news is popping up all over Twitter. That's why I had to come live with you guys and tell you guys about it. I know it's late. I know it's a Friday. I know you guys are probably partying. Um, I just wanted to bring it first because that's just kind of what we do, right? So now that it's finally licensed, the facility is expected to produce in excess of 140,000 kilograms of cannabis per year. Afria owns approximately 51% of the joint venture facility, while Double Diamond Farms retains 49%. Total facility construction costs are in excess of $109.5 million. AFRIA is currently trading at $520 in after hours trading on the New York Stock Exchange. Interesting. This is from the Deep Dive. And literally, this is trending all over Twitter. This is trending all over Twitter. So I had to come live and bring it to you guys. Let's just see what you guys got to say about it. Thank you guys for joining me. How's everybody doing today? How you doing, Chris? How you doing, Pete? What's up, DJ? Lorenzo, what's up, brother? Lorenzo is a member in the Telegram. He's always here when we're live. He is a true cannabis enthusiast. I am a true cannabis enthusiast. I will always be a true cannabis enthusiast. And um, I just love the movement. I believe it's a revolution. And I think Rich TV Live should be a part of it. So I'm willing to go through the ups and downs. And um, I think that's what makes it so exciting. Um, one day you're a hero. The next day you could be a zero. But the next day you could be a hero again. Afria could make a lot of heroes out of a lot of people. They can make a lot of heroes out of a lot of people. Happy Friday to you, Lorenzo. Ross Fleming says, it's crazy how you were calling all these names before they became big boys. Yeah, man, we've been calling it and we're just going to keep calling it. And that's what we do. And I get ridiculed and I get laughed at and I get mocked. And I'm like, we're in a sector that's down 50 to 60%. The entire sector is. So it's going to be very difficult. People are going to laugh at you. People are going to say you're stupid. Um, even with cryptocurrency, the same thing happened. Um, you know, this is just what happens when you're an investor and there's going to be trends. And right now the trend is down, but it doesn't mean that these companies are not growing. I'm going to consistently bring you guys the statistics, the stats, and I'm going to say it over and over again. And people are like, oh, you don't do due diligence. Well, I bring you guys the real stats, I bring you guys the news and I bring you guys the stats. The reality is these companies have not been making money. They're starting to make money. The money they're making is still small compared to some of the companies that are on senior exchanges. But the reason why they're trading at such high multiples is because the market is all knowing and the market knows that these companies have huge potential. That's why you see Canopy Growth trading at $26. That's why you see GW Pharma trading at over $130. That's why you see Tilray trading over $20 because they have enormous potential. So the market is all knowing, okay? Now, in saying that, there's going to be ups and downs in the market. The market's always going to have ups and downs. Markets are going to always go up and they're always going to go down because that's how market makers make money. That's how institutions make money. That's how shorters make money. That's how investors make money. They make money on the up and the, on the way down. And 
the overall broader markets are up. The overall broader markets have been great. Like if you're buying Apple, you are getting rich. Apple is making a lot of people rich and Apple's probably going to just keep going higher. So there's a lot of ways to make money in the markets. You don't just have to buy cannabis stocks. Cannabis stocks are very risky. Okay. And past performance is not an indicator of future results. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. Chris says Afria is killing it. Um, Lorenzo says that's how you start November. Yeah, I think it was a nice day. And there's a lot, a lot of good companies that did well. I think that, you know, the reality is it's already starting to change because a year ago there was no companies with profit. Now we have 44 companies with good revenue. We've got companies with profit and the profit is only going to get bigger because now everybody, the memo is out. Everybody knows if you want to grow, you need to have profit. So this is kind of like the way it goes. That's how people learn. That's how people grow. And I believe that you're going to see companies that are in trouble get bailed out. Uh, either it's going to be by banks or other companies that are going to find ways to work with them. I, I, I think that this industry is a lot bigger than what people give it credit for. I think there's a lot of opportunity everywhere. And um, I think that the opportunity is only going to get bigger. And there's going to be ups and downs along the way. Afria a year ago, as Justin from our Telegram was saying today, Afria a year ago was a laughing stock. And now they're like one of the biggest players in the world. That's how quickly things can change. So anything can happen in the sector. And that's what makes it so exciting. But it's also very risky. So be careful. Chris says, love full alert and don't panic. Chris says, I want to hear more news of 2.0 products from companies. Yeah, I think that you'll hear more and more. It's all coming. It's all coming. It's all coming. Jordan says, we will never forget about Afria's Latin American asset scandal. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of people forget because there's always going to be new investors that didn't even know. Yeah, I think Afri is going to have a good Monday. I mean, they had a good day today. They're up 3%, right? So I think that the trend will be up for Afria. Pete Ferraro says, so will the sector be green Monday? Rich, in your opinion, when will the Safe Banking Act be approved? It's a good question. Um, I actually heard this week that it could be approved as early as Christmas. Now, that was just one person's opinion. And that was uh, Hadley Ford, the uh, CEO of Ianthus. He was saying that uh, some of his people were saying it could happen as early as Christmas. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I think it'll happen in 2020. Ryan says, holy crap, thank God I have 36,525 shares at 880. Why did Tilt halt trading today? I don't know. It's a good question. Does anybody know why Tilt halted trading today? Happy Friday to you, Lorenzo. People always call me when I'm live. It's crazy. It's like... Um, Jordan says you invested in Bitcoin rich side conversation. Yeah. And, uh, other cryptocurrencies as well. I'm very big into cryptocurrencies. I'm a big fan of cryptocurrencies have been for years now. 
Lorenzo says, looking forward to Monday already. A lot of earnings on the way this month. Yeah, and I think the earnings are going to be big. And I think there's going to be a lot of companies that are going to blow it out of the water. There's going to be some companies that are going to be disappointing. And you're going to see the stocks are going to get punished if they're disappointing. And if they do well, you'll see the stocks will do well. Sheldon Snow says, can't wait for labs earnings. Yeah, I think they're going to be strong. Fat Nut says, can a V-cell up 30% since I spoke about it here about a week ago? Yeah. Um, take a look at ALPP, guys. Did you guys see this stock? You want to talk about stocks that are hot? Take a look at ALPP. That stock is ridiculous. So I get a message from one of our members, and he's like, hey, Rich, by the way, uh, thank you for everything. I found a stock, and I made 100 grand. His name is Nathan. Congratulations, Nathan. I'm really happy for you, man. Um, he told me about it when it was at eight cents, ALPP. It's at 24 cents now. Like, are you serious? I didn't get into it. Alpine for technologies. It was up 60% today. Our entire community knows about it. I should have done a video on it. Um, this stock is up 2,400% ALPP. It's crazy. It's crazy. ALPP is just absolutely crazy. It was at a penny on October 1st. So a month ago to the day, it was at a penny. It's gone from one penny to 24 cents. That's 2,400% profit. So 24 times your money. So if you put $1,000 in the stock, you would have made 24 grand. If you put 10 grand in the stock, you would have made 240 grand. Congratulations to everyone who won on ALPP. So this is what we're talking about. Like, I want to be able to find these winners all the time. Like, I want to find these winners first, you know? That's really what I want to do. I want our community to be able to find these winners first, man. ALPP is just such a monster. And that's what we need to do as a community so we can really, <laughs> we can make a lot of money. And um, I have... Uh, a Forex trading and a crypto trading academy that I'm launching next week that I'm personally becoming a member of. And you can actually build a business and train other traders, which I think is a great concept and copy trade other Forex and cryptocurrency and actually trading experts in this academy. And um, they average between five to 30% a day. And you only trade one hour a day. So I'm going to be doing that starting next week. I'm going to be doing videos on that. So stay tuned to that. I also have a professional options trader that we're going to be launching options trading with next week. So we're going to have two different academies, one for options trading, one for cryptocurrency trading and Forex trading. And I'm just so excited. I've been so busy doing a lot of that. Um, the cannabis sector has been just crazy. And despite the fact that these companies keep growing their revenues and keep building and hiring and staffing and growing the revenues by thousands of percent, the sector's down. And I'm going to continue to explain to you guys that this sector doesn't need to be down this bad because the overall broader markets are up all time highs. So there really is no reason for the sector to be down other than the fact that the sector was already up. So this is like pressing a reset. And now companies have to do it based on revenues. Whereas before, it was a lot on hype. And companies went very, very far on hype. However, the market is very, very smart. And the market is all-knowing. And if a company doesn't have money, the market knows it before you and me. Believe me. And that's where you will see companies that are suffering. You'll see companies that are suffering on their balance sheets are the ones that are struggling financially. 
And if you look at companies like Kronos Group and you look at companies like Canopy Growth, some of the reasons why they've done extremely well is they have billions of dollars in the bank. That's why they've done really well. So follow the money. Follow the money. Go where the money goes. Yeah, uh, Ianthus was live. I was streaming it. I was streaming it, but I wasn't where they were. I don't know where they were. I don't even know where the conference was held. It was a virtual conference, but they, all of the CEOs were in one place. I'm assuming it was somewhere in Florida, but I'm not sure. Hey, my pleasure, Chris. I gl I'm glad to do it. You know, I was learning too. I want to learn about these companies as well, man. I'm constantly learning and I'm constantly trying to become a better trader. You know, trading is something that takes years. It's not something you just you just master overnight. You're going to learn from ups and downs and you're going to have really big highs and you're going to have some big lows. So um, there's a lot to learn when it comes to trading. Why ACB don't going up? Um they have a lot of shares issued outstanding and they have a spending problem. They're not making money. So when the company starts to make money, then the stock will go up. Duarte Barrow says, my portfolio has been green last two days. Not by much, but I'll take it. Hopefully this is consolidating, leading to a reversal. It's going to reverse eventually. It's not going to be going down forever, guys. Market makers want to make money on the way up too, believe me. AF Alam says, Rich, which one is skeptical but high risk reward stock? Well, I think every company is skeptical because it's such a new industry. Nobody really knows who's going to be here in 5, 10 years. It's all a risk. Uh, but the companies that have the most money right now are Kronos Group and Canopy Growth. So those are the two that I think have the most potential because they have the most money behind them. So right now they have the most potential, but they also are very priced very high. So you have to be very careful. But I think because they have the most money, have the most potential because they have the most money. The people with the money make the rules. That's just the way the world works. They're the ones that are going to be able to buy the companies when they're struggling. Pete Ferraro says, Rich, I am heavily invested in labs. Do you think it can be a $10 stock in 2020? Yeah, I think it will be. I think it will be. I don't know if it'll stay at $10, but I will not be surprised to see them hit $10. I think they're one of the better companies in the entire sector. I really do. I think that they have so much potential. I'm really, really excited about Metafarm Labs. And I've traded it many times, and I want to get back into it again. I'm just watching it. Uh, it's been really good to me. Um, it's been a great trading stock. Same with Valens Growworks. I think both of them have so much potential. I think 2019 has been the year of the extraction stocks, clearly. And Metafarm Labs and Valens Grow Works are both up in 2019, despite the fact that the sector's down for seven months straight. They're actually up in 2019 and a lot. And uh, they've remained up. So it is definitely the year of the extraction stocks. RD Sully says Any ideas why tilt would be halted? Spiked 20% before the halt. So it should be good news, right? Uh, well, I mean, someone might know something that we don't know, but who knows, right? Tilt has been a very volatile stock. They've got a lot of issues themselves with money. So, you know, they have a lot of revenue, but they have a lot of insider selling issues. So it remains to be seen. We have to be careful with tilt. So, I, I mean, we don't know. We'll see. Hopefully it's good news. But I think that they are undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed because their revenue shows that they have tons of potential. But will they be able to get there? You know, a lot of these companies have issues with money. 
This is what is happening now. They're getting squeezed and um, they're getting squeezed for money. That's what's happening. Jordan says, ALPP, big gains, full show. Yeah, one of our members made over 100 grand. We just got to find those every day, man. Those 2,400% runners, man. And some people are saying ALPP is going to keep going. I don't like to chase green, but man, that thing is just ridiculous. 60% in a day. So keep it on your radar. I'm not suggesting anybody chases it, but do whatever you guys got to do. David K says, haha, just sold some shares of Afria today to get some Aurora. Weird move, but whatever. Um, hey man, you know what? I think that Aurora is a great company too. And I think right now you're getting it at a good price. Five Finger Limited says you have to make money now. AF Alana says, Cure Leaf got tons of lawsuits, all kinds. Yeah, that's definitely not going to help, but that might also allow us to get it at a great price. Chris says, Harvest One is looking pretty bad lately. Alberto Ramos says, Rich, what's your opinion on Canopy's new beverage and edible lineup? I think beverages and edibles are going to be really big for a lot of these companies. I think the profit margins will be big too. I'm excited about it. I think that this is really going to help be a catalyst and turn this sector around. Mm -hmm. Pete says, Rich Labs, what do you think they will report for the earnings on November 12th? Man, I don't, I don't uh, like to project what they're going to report. I'm not 100% sure, but hopefully they beat what they did last quarter. I believe they will. So, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 40 million would be nice. They did 30 million last quarter, 31 million, if I remember correctly. So, wow, 31.5 million. So, 40 million would be great. AFLM says, I don't like True Leaf price. Does not make sense. The market's all knowing. I mean, everything is priced in, right? So they're, you know, they're in the US. They're a major player. The US could legalize. Um, they're in the right place, the right time. I mean, you're welcome to short it if you want to. Could be very dangerous if you do, though. Because if this market explodes, that thing could easily go to 20, 30 bucks. There's some people that have given truly a $36 price target. Jordan says it's hard to make money on the markets when the elites control the markets. Yeah, exactly. That's why you have to learn how to make money up and down. You got to learn how to trade every single type of currency. If you can make money in Forex, do Forex trading. If you can make money doing options trading, do options trading. If you can make money trading equities, trade equities. If you can make money trading tech stocks, trade tech stocks. If you can make money trading gaming stocks, trade gaming stocks. As long as you can make money from your laptop. That's the laptop lifestyle, baby. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants that. Robert says, we are going to see MJ companies either get a buyout or go bankrupt. Yeah. It's the only thing they're going to happen. Or they're just going to keep diluting their shares. They'll just keep diluting their shares, do a reverse split, and then dilute them again. So far, the reverse for uh, Huge has worked. It's doing better after the reverse than it did before the reverse. So, so far, actually, I'm kind of impressed with what they've done with the reverse. Will it last? Probably not, but... So far, it's done well for them. So far.
Robert Restrepo says, Rich, do you own Canopy Growth? Uh, no. I have in the past. Um, I always told myself I wasn't going to buy them again once they go over 10 bucks. So then I saw them go to 70 and I was like, holy shit. Um, now they're down to 26. So, I mean, I wouldn't be against buying it. I haven't bought it yet, but I wouldn't be against buying it at these prices, honestly. Because they have a billion dollar partner in Constellation Brands and they have a lot of technology, a lot of intellectual properties. Sheldon Snow says, VGW at 270 today was a basement blowout. Yeah, Valens is a good company. It's a good company. And uh, they're going to do some big things. Did you hear about their $50 million contract that they did on Wednesday? So, I mean, there's potential there, man. Huge potential. Yeah, I think those two extraction stocks, Labs and Valens Growworks, are two giants. And uh, Valens is very heavily shorted, so be very careful, guys. Sorry, um, Labs is very heavily shorted, so be very careful. There's lots of shorts. Chris says... David K. Aurora will have their day. Oh, yeah. I think we all know that. The whole world is loading up on Aurora. We got more shareholders than almost anybody now. Definitely more shareholders than anybody in the cannabis sector. They're affordable. They're the most talked about uh, within millennials. Aurora Cannabis is that company. Trucker Dude says, Rich, is Supreme going to come up? It's so quiet. I believe it will. And I believe these prices for Supreme are just absolutely ridiculous. I think that company is so good. But they've always sucked with their they've always sucked with their stock. So some of these companies just can't get it when it comes to the stock. And you know, Supreme Pharmaceuticals Fire falls in that category. But the company itself, I believe, is a very good company. Chris says they need time to get their shit together, but Aurora isn't going anywhere. I think these prices for Aurora are really, really good. These are the lowest prices we've seen in Aurora in two years. Alberto Ramos says 2020, don't forget the micro dosing of magic mushrooms. Mentioned by Bruce Linton, boss.cn. Sheldon Snow says, guys, VGW is profitable and make great margins. Yeah, I like them. Where is the VGW right here? 16.5 million in quarterly revenue, 87% quarter over quarter growth, 5.5 million in adjusted operating income. Balance Grow Works. AFLM says, just because cannabis companies hyped, I will not buy. I will wait for bottom. Hey, man, nobody tells anybody to buy anything here, man. Buy when you're ready, if you're ready. Five Finger Limited says, Fat Nuts, I made 13% on Canna V-Cell. Hey, good job, Five Finger Limited. Sheldon Snow says, VGW is not hype. That's why I buy now. Chris says, Alberto, I'm big on micro-dosing mushrooms. It's been proven to be very effective in treating post-traumatic stress and depression. In low doses, it can be a way better alternative to the opioid crisis which is killing people. A 
AF Alam says, I don't short cannabis stocks. I only shorted Tilray once. It covered all my losses. Nice. Don says, Rich, I am here now. Hey, good to see you, Don. Michael Robertson says, Rich, do you still own Hexo? Yes, I do. Don says, I pick up 50 shares GTBIF. It looks good. I did my homework. Yeah, I like them too. Uh, Green Thumb, 44 million in quarterly sales, 228% year over year growth, but they did have a $9.9 .9 million loss of adjusted operating income. Robert, uh, what's Sheldon Snow says GTII donates 50,000 a quarter to an unknown charity. Books are shady. Careful. <laughs> um, Robert Restrepo says, thank you, Rich, for giving us your opinion and your day-to-day -day streaming. Remember to do your own research on companies that you like. Yeah, everybody do your research. And what we want to do is use this as an opportunity for the community to share opinions, share ideas, and have a place where people can tell Hey, I like this stock. What do you guys think? Should we buy it? Should we not? Is it a long? Is it a short? Because we can make money up and down. We can make money up and down. So let's do that, right? Let's take advantage and make money up and down. Let's use all the tools at our disposable. Trucker Dude says, what do you think of Hemp Inc. in Carolina, Oregon, Nevada, and teaching all farmers to grow hemp in a lot of say in a lot of states? Um Hemp Inc. just has too many shares issued and it's standing, and it's kind of a penny stock, so it's never going to be taken seriously unless it does something drastic like a reverse. Well-rounded reviewer says, Rich, what do you think about Oxy these days? I think Oxy has a lot of potential, but they have a lot of shares issued outstanding because they have so many shares issued outstanding. They're very diluted and they can't justify a $500 million market cap. So that's why the price is struggling to stay high because they have so many shares and how are you going to justify a 500 million market cap when you have little to no revenue? Dylan Fraser says, sweet, let's go, and tilt, halt, oh my god, what a Friday. Lorenzo says, Rich, you got the fireplace going, bro. Yeah, bro, I'm not in Cali like you, man. I'm in Van City, man. I'm in Van City. So yeah, I got the fireplace going. Joe Cracker says, are the rights for Xenobis out yet? I don't believe they are. Smoking559 says, I think we all know pot stocks will explode, and that's why we're all here. Yeah, we know the cannabis stocks are going to explode. You can only hold it down for so long, especially when you have companies like Ianthus revenue growing by 7,400%. Planet 13's revenue grew by 275%. GW Pharma's revenue grew by 2,094%. GTII Green Thumb's revenue grew by 228%. True Leaf's revenue grew by 130%. Cure Leaf's revenue grew by 231%. Valens Grow Works revenue grew by 87% quarter over quarter. Organigram's revenue grew, grew by 621% year over year. Labs revenue grew by 43% quarter over quarter. Like that's nuts. If they grow by another 43%, that means they would do about 45 million. Like that's crazy. Um, and uh, CGC's revenue grew by 249% year over year. I mean, these numbers are huge. These are some big numbers. Canopy growth, 90.5 million. Metafarm Labs, 30.5 million. Organigram, 24.8 million. Valens Grow Work, 16.5 million. Curly, 48 million. Truly, 57 million. Green Thumb, 44 million. GW Pharma, 72 million. 
Planet 13, 16.5 million. Ianthus, 19 million. These numbers are only going to get bigger. What's going to happen when these numbers get bigger? How long are you going to hold them down? Come on, guys. How long are you going to hold them down? You can't hold them down forever. It's not going to happen. Can't happen. Alberto Ramos says, Rich, how about a comment on our election? Prairie's dark blue pipeline energy sector. Well, I know the energy sector has been doing well, but as far as like politics are concerned, I try to get out of politics. I don't want to get too involved in politics or religion. I don't really like to talk about either. Um, I think everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Uh, I just want a happy, healthy, safe environment for our children to grow up in and for myself to be able to um, have a, a normal life and have resources and tools to be able to grow. And I believe we have that in Canada. And that's why we're one of the best countries in the world to live in. I think that uh, we have um, a very good healthcare system compared to most countries, even though a lot of people complain. I think we're pretty lucky. And um, as far as the politics are concerned, you know, I'm kind of happy if you're not broke, don't fix it. That's kind of my attitude. So if they kind of kept it the same, but changed it a little bit, took a little bit of power away, you know, from the leaders, from the leadership, but uh, they're still leading the ship. So, you know, let's see what happens in the next election. But I know we're gonna get we're gonna get to the next election. AF Alam says, "Be careful with hemp; they may do a reverse split." Yeah, I mean they'll never be taken seriously unless they do a reverse split. Don says, "What do you think of fire in calf well?" To do the pot cells. Sorry, I don't understand the question. Chris says, Oxley announces repayment of approximately 97% of its unsecured convertible debentures due January 16, 2020. Yeah, that's pretty good news. But they still have too many shares issued outstanding. I did. I heard it. But the shares issued outstanding are just still too much. Lorenzo says, that's what I'm talking about. It's getting colder in LA. Had the heater running the other morning. You had the heater running in LA? Damn. I didn't know you'd need to do that. Chris says, I think 2020 will be a good year for Oxley. Man, I hope so. I've been saying that for Oxley for years. So they've been a huge disappointment for a long time. Huge disappointment. Massive. Robert Restrepo says, what was the revenue growth on MedMen? I don't have MedMen's numbers in front of me, um, but I heard that the revenue growth was strong. I can pull it up, actually. Let me try to pull it up for you. Mm. Oh, it looks nice. Looked like we had a green day throughout the whole North America today. So that's a nice way to start November. Um, hopefully this will continue. And after seven months of red, it would be nice to have some green. Um, MedMen did 42 million in quarterly sales. So MedMen did 42 million in quarterly sales, 15% quarter over quarter growth. So that was good. Uh, 104% year over year growth. That's good but a 52.9 million adjusted operating income loss, which is not good. They reported, yeah, just, I guess this week. But it says their next financials is on the November 26th. So I guess they're giving us a guidance. There's a lot of companies coming out. Uh, Kush Bottles is coming out here. Uh, next week.
Cruise bottles at $41.5 million in revenue. A $16.3 million loss of adjusted operating income. 18% quarter-over-quarter quarter growth. 221% year-over-year growth. MeriMed MRMD is one that people should watch. $25.7 million in quarterly sales. Still under a dollar. Uh, 630%. 630% quarter over quarter growth. Like what? 774% annual growth and 5.3 million in adjusted operating income. Beast. Like just beast for the quarter. So we need to watch them very, very, very closely. I know, Lorenzo, you've been trading it. You've been killing it on them. Good job, man. AF Alam says, Canagro will be huge. It's coming. g 73 says, what's happening with RTI? That has to move big time with oils and edibles coming on board. Thoughts? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Radiant Technologies. I've just been watching them. I do want them, but they've been doing nothing. And they've been down like everybody else and beat down. So I've just been waiting for the right time. What do you guys think? When do you think is the right time for Radiant Technologies? Because they've just been getting beat down. Life is, says, hey, Rich, did CGC make a mistake firing Bruce Linton? CGC stock price has been lowering since his departure. Will Canadian cannabis stocks get another boost um yeah i think it was a mistake i think i've been pretty open about that and i think it definitely hurt the entire sector i think bruce getting fired and can trust scandal really shock the entire sector because what it did is it scared all the banks all the banks that were funding can trust because they had a lot of big banks involved in CanTrust. CanTrust was like blue chip. Can't fail. All the big banks, everyone was in on CanTrust. And that scandal just rocked the whole sector. And since then, the money just dried up. Because banks don't like to lose money. So that was a really big problem. And uh, yeah, you know, Bruce, the biggest promoter of the whole sector, getting fired. That was not good for the sector. Well-rounded reviewer says, I think Oxley is quietly positioning themselves as the sleeping giant. I think it's possible. I like Oxley a lot. I've liked them for a long time, but they've been such a disappointment as far as the stock. If you look at the price, it's just never done well. Don says, in California, all the fires that are burning out of control. Oh, there, there's fires even now in the wintertime? That's crazy. Dance Make Moves Marvel says, who is going to win, King Kong or Godzilla? Wow. That's a tough fight. I don't know. What do you guys think? Joe Cracker says, 2020 will be a good year for weed stocks in general, if not 2021. I mean, we know it's coming. We've never seen a year where there hasn't been a huge explosion. Uh, 2017, there was a huge explosion. 2018, there was a huge explosion. 2019, there was a huge explosion. We've had multiple explosions uh, some years. I'm pretty sure 2020, we're going to have a huge explosion. Dylan Fraser says, no good in Cali. Wish Cali all the best. Yeah, I wish everyone in Cali all the best. Stay safe, guys. Um, don't take any chances. If you have to, you know, go to a safe area, safe houses, please do so. Um, you know, fires are not something you want to mess with. It's really dangerous.
Duarte Barrow says, oh, you guys got a lot of messages. Uh, Oxley has been disappointing because of no revenue. 2020 will different. We could see huge numbers in 2020, 2021. Well, we've already seen the numbers growing all across the board. I think that that will continue. Trucker Dude says, is this the time to go to American stocks since they are so expensive compared to Canadian stocks? I think that uh, there's going to be opportunity in Canada and the United States for cannabis. Michael Robertson says, Rich, thanks for all you do for us and taking time to hang with us. All your efforts are really appreciated. And forget what the haters say. We all know this sector will come back in a big way. Well, I'm a cannabis enthusiast. Like, we're cannabis enthusiasts, right? Like, we're cannabis enthusiasts. Like, we're here for the revolution, right? We're here for the revolution. We believe in the plant. We believe in the power of the planet. Some people don't believe that. Some people just want to short us. That's fine. You know, we can make money down too. We can make money up and down. There's nothing wrong with that. Five Finger Limited says, it's 82 in Miami, a little cool. Oh, buddy, you got me so jealous. I want to live where you guys live, man. One day, one day I'll be out where you guys are, I promise. AF Alam says, every time I buy $200 worth of one cannabis stock, they go down 3%. So I stop buying because other people are buying. Yeah, people are going to keep buying because there's going to be cannabis enthusiasts because so many people believe in cannabis and CBD and hemp and cannabis-infused beverages, edibles. I mean, we're talking about some serious industries that are just starting. They're just starting. They're not going to stop. C-A-L-F is California short. Is that a stock you're talking about, C-A-L-F? I don't understand. Speaking code, brother. I don't understand the code. I'm sorry. Plus four in Edmonton, Alberta. Jerry says, Mosin Coors has changed its name from brewing to beverage and close to a 52-week low. That's bold, but long-term, this could be a winner along with Hexo. I agree with you. I'm an owner of Hexo. I think Hexo has so much potential. Hell G73 says, is Xena boom or bust? Well, I mean, I'm a shareholder of Xena. So far, it's been a big bust. <laughs> uh, do I hope it booms? Of course, as a shareholder, I will always hope any company I invest in is going to boom. Do I still think that it has a chance to be a player? I do. But they're running out of money. So they need to do something serious fast. Mark Trudeau says, hey, Rich, would like to know your perspective on THC Biomed stock. Is doing nothing, but the company seems stable. Yeah, you know, I've traded THC Biomed in the past. Um, I just lost interest in them because they just didn't have major revenue growth. And right now it's all about revenue growth. And if you're not going to, uh, if you're not going to have revenue growth, you're not going to have a chance. Dylan says, I got stopped out of Xena, 20% loss, only had a small position. AF Alam says, King Kong. <laughs> Dylan Fraser says, I bought Tilt before the halt. I hope you win, brother. I hope it's good news for you. Sheldon Snow says, holding a bag of Xena, things will pick up with revenues. 
I heard that Xena will be profitable in November, but I've also heard that Xena could go bankrupt. So I'm, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to think about with Xena, man. I'm really, really, dis I'm disgusted. I'm disappointed. Um, as a shareholder, I feel decimated. Um, but at the same time, I know that in the stock market, these are the risks that are involved. I never thought Xena would ever be at that level, going to two of their facilities, touring their facilities, seeing the way they were run. I never thought it would be like this for, for, for Zenovus. Never. Never. It's crazy. So, yeah, it's so disappointing. Um, you know, I just... They have a product that people are buying. I'm hearing that the products are flying off the shelves. That's the part that just is so disappointing is the product is flying off the shelves, but they can't make the product fast enough. The business actually has products that people want, but they don't have enough money to substantiate themselves. And then there's other companies that have tons of money, but then they got no product. Everything is so backwards. Somebody needs to help Xenobus. Don says Aurora launched a safety campaign on edibles October 30th. Yeah, and I think you're going to see more and more of that where it's going to be cannabis and CBDs and edibles education. Hell G73 says nothing really is going to happen big time until Big Pharma gets on board. It's a good point. Big money there. Sheldon Snow says Big Pharma will join with extraction companies first. I think you got a good uh, a good thought there. And extraction companies have been hot. Five Finger Limited says Rich California is burning down. It's on the news every day. That's crazy, man. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope things turn around for you guys, man. I really do. Pray for some rain. We need like the skies to open and just rain. Sheldon Snow says, everyone smash that like. I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you, man. Thank you guys for being here with me on your Friday evening or your Saturday, wherever you are in the world. Thank you guys for joining me. Lorenzo says, a lot of fires. Yes, air quality has been pretty bad in LA. Very dry weather and strong dry winds. Unfortunately... Unfortunately, we have these problems this time of year in fall. Is it always like that in the fall? I know it's like that in the summertime. It's here like that in Vancouver in the summertime. But in the fall? Man. Joe Cracker says, let's hope it gets legalized federally in the States. Yeah, I think that uh, my prediction is November 2020. It could be legalized. And if it is, that would be such a huge catalyst a year from now. Just imagine Trump saying, we're going to legalize cannabis and it's going to generate billions of dollars for Americans and create thousands of jobs for Americans. Oh, man, I could see it. Fat Nut says, Rich, what do you think about Headset, which is an investment from Rivers and is backed by Canopy? Is it a public company? I'm not familiar with Headset. I own Rivers. I don't own Canopy right now. I have in the past, and I'm thinking about picking up Canopy. I want some, and it's kind of low right now. Love to know what you guys think. Is now the time to buy Canopy? Oh, CAF is short wording for California. Sorry. I apologize. I didn't understand what you were talking about. <laughs> AFLM is saying CAF is a cannabis stock too. LOL. Trucker Dude says, I heard there is a shortage in Canada. Is that true? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. They don't, 
They can't keep the cannabis. Like there's not enough cannabis for the people. It's just like such a nightmare. Dylan Fraser is saying, I wonder if DYME and Tilt are getting together. Because I guess they're both tilt, they're both halted at the same time. Alberto Ramos says, Rich, have you heard of that company out of Quebec, MYM Nutraceuticals, spiking huge lately? Yeah, I know that company. I've actually, uh, some of my associates are talking to them about doing some work with them with CBDs. So I think they have a chance to be a good company, but they've been beat down like a lot of people. They're coming back a little bit, but they're still down overall. But uh, yeah, I think they have, you know, they have potential. Hell G73 says, what is the Rich TV community thoughts on Juju? Any recent news? I think they had some news recently, but, you know, they've kind of fallen out of favor. Joe Cracker says, you think might go bankrupt Xena? Yeah, they're running out of money. That's why they're doing a raise, because they're running out of money. It's a big problem. If these companies don't get money before they have to pay down their loans, how are they going to pay down? How is Zenibus going to pay down $100 million in loans? And their stock is already decimated. So what's going to happen there? What are you going to do? Reverse the stock and then issue 100 million shares at a dollar? I mean, maybe that's what they're going to do. I don't know. AF Alam says, buy and sell are the main drivers of the stock market. Cannabis is the number one emerging market in the world. Huge ups and downs are normal. It's a hyper growth sector. Don says, I heard that same thing that Canada was running out every day. Yeah, we can't keep the cannabis on the shelves. Sheldon Snow says the product is there, but the government is shitting the bed. Yeah, it's just a shit show. Hell G73 says, I don't think Juju will go bankrupt. Did a lot of due diligence. They look to be working with the new Amway. Hate all you want about Amway, but they make bank with their massive distribution. I got no hate for Amway. They're a real business. Sheldon Snow says some stores in Canada have no idea when more product is coming in. What a nightmare. Sheldon Snow says it just arrives, LOL, a joke. Oh my God. Lorenzo Cama says, yeah, Rich, during fall, we get Santa Ana winds and it kicks up very dry inland winds. So any little spark will literally create a forest fire. Holy smokes, man. That's scary. Jeez. Sheldon Snow says, once stores open in once stores open in all the communities like liquor stores, can you imagine the revenue? Yeah, it's going to be a five to ten year run, and the revenues are going to be in the billions. Yeah, have a good night, uh, Lorenzo. Go get some dinner, buddy. Don says, did you look at BLOZ? It tests THC so you don't drive too high and go to jail. Yeah, it's a pretty cool product. Hey, my pleasure, Lorenzo, man. Have a great night, brother. Don says, Rich, now it's at 45 cents a share. Yeah, it might be the time to start picking it up. I mean, there's so many companies. There's 443 cannabis stocks, guys. So be careful. Do your due diligence. Do your research. Stay diversified. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put everything you have into cannabis stocks just because you're a cannabis enthusiast. You could have been buying Apple and made a ton of money on Apple because Apple's been flying and they're a blue chip, big board stock. So there's a lot of ways to make money, not just cannabis stocks, okay? I don't want anybody losing money. I, I love the sector. I love making investments, but... The cannabis sector is very, very risky. There's very, very big highs 
and there's very, very big lows. Okay. So do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything. Thank you guys for joining me on this live feed once again with Afria with the big news today. Unbelievable. Getting a license from Health Canada after market. Afria. Do your due diligence. Do your research. They were up 3% today. I will not be surprised to see them go up. They are at $6.81 in Canada. This is a great price. In my opinion, for Afria, yeah, they could go a little bit lower, but I think the upside from here is tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. Let's see if we can see what some analysts think about Afria. So they have a medium target price from seven analyst estimates of a low of $8, a high of $14.50, and a medium price target of $11.87. And the stock is currently at $6.80. So no analyst thinks it's going to be lower than $8. Currently at $6.81, and they just got a license that will more than double their capacity in Canada. I think it's a no-brainer, guys. I don't know. But like I said, I'm not a licensed advisor. Do your due diligence. Do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here at Rich TV Live. Always invest in the best because the best is blessed. I think that Afria is going to have a big Monday. I think they could have a chance to really go a lot higher from here. Let's just leave in style because we got ill kid. And he's met, he's made the best original music in the world, in the cannabis sector, and in the stock market in general. I've never heard anybody make music like this. So I feel fortunate to have this. It's like the tools of the gods. So I want to share it with you guys. And um, like every time I listen to his music, it's just fire. It's just fire. Google and Facebook track you and save every piece of information they you find, you? which is creepy. But not everyone is right. <laughs> Listen to the words. Yes, Pfizer is a very good stock. <laughs> ALPP up 2,400%. What? After it just got a license to double their capacity, what? Welcome to Rich TV. Welcome to Rich TV. What we talk about stocks, cash, charts, limits, red, green. Something that we never see. Welcome to Rich TV. Welcome to Rich TV. What we talk about stocks, cash, charts, limits, red, green. Something that we never
Have a great weekend, everybody. I'm out. Peace.